Today is Monday, May 10th, and it's 6.30, so I will call this meeting to order. If everyone would please stand and recite the pledge with me. I pledge allegiance, allegiance of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. Shirley, have you had the opportunity to call the roll? I have taken roll. Everybody is present, but Doral Riley will be absent tonight. You do have a quorum. Thank you. First item on our agenda this evening is the consent agenda, which consists of the approval of minutes from the April 12th uh, <laughs> meeting. Do we have any discussion on the on the consent agenda? If not, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the April 12th meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The consent agenda passes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is new business. Uh, shops at Kearney First Plat, Replats, Lots 3A, 3C, and Track C Final Plat. David, do you have a report? Yes, I do. I'll be happy to get that to you. I want to do a share screen so we can maybe pull up the plat drawing. I'd like to do that. Let's find out where we're at. Here we go. Scroll down. We got Robert De La Fuente with Star Acquisitions, who's in the audience via Zoom. Uh, he's here representing the applicant. If uh, there are any questions later, um, here's a location map of the property. Um, basically, includes um, everything along the northwest side of Watson Drive, north of the hotel, on the area map. The hotel's kind of at the, uh, the bottom of the page. Uh, between Watson Drive and the interstate and includes the uh, La Fuente property. The name of the replat drawing would be the shops at Kearney, first plat, replat of lots 3A, 3C, and track C, final plat. Um, this plat drawing would do uh, several different things at the same time. One it would create lot C3, or I'm sorry, lot 3C for the proposed club car wash. Lot 3A would be corrected for the La Fuente Mexican restaurant site. If anybody remembers several years ago, there was a par parking issue and they bought an additional strip of ground along the west side for more parking spaces. Uh, this replats their lot so that we have one, uh, one piece of ground for them rather than two different uh, properties out there. And this property also creates Track G, which is a the location. It's up at the... Uh, up adjacent to the, I would say, the trash dumpster location for uh, uh, La Fuente, the location of the billboard sign that's off the off-ramp. And then lot 3E would be the remainder of the property between the car wash site and the hotel site. Um, we would expect that to be further developed down the road as that property develops into two or three different uh, business locations in the future. No additional utility easements or right-of-ways are proposed. Um, there is a, an easement proposed from uh, through the La Fuente property to Track G for the billboard site so they can use the parking lot to get back and forth uh, to service the billboard. Staff recommends approval of the final plat with the following conditions. One, submit a revised plat with the following changes, other changes if necessary. Um, two, record the final plat within one year of Board of Alderman approval. And three, develop the project in compliance with all city codes, conditions, requirements, and payment of fees and or taxes. This application will be forwarded to the Board of Aldermen for consideration. And again, we do have an applicant uh, representative tonight via Zoom, Robert De La Fuente with Star Acquisitions. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, Mr. La Fuente, do you, would you like to say anything? Thank you, Tom. At least I thought he was. There he is. Hey, where is Sorry, no, David. Provide a, a very good summary, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you, um, board. Do you have? Do we have any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Maybe you could explain it to me a little better, David. When you were reading that off, okay. That extra lot there that uh, Los Fuentes was getting for parking. Uh huh. They were going to develop in the parking. Is that still staying with that for parking in the future, or is that going to 
this other lot with the car lot. No, it stays. If, if you look, let me let me do the share. If we go to the location map, we'll. Well, the reason I was asking okay. was this last couple of weeks I've seen vehicles parking up there for La Fuente's in the grass. In the grass. Yes. Well, that's that'll stop once the if the site plan for car wash is approved and they develop that site. That won't be available for anyone to park up in the grass. It will not. It would not be because uh, yeah, the car wash would be there. Area going to the car wash, or is it still with La? Fuente? It will stay with La Fuente. Okay. Yeah. If we go to um, let me, if you let me share here again, I unshared so that Robert could address the board. Uh, let's get to the right spot here. Let me, if you can see. On the location map, Chuck, do you see this red line that cuts through the middle of the parking lot? Right. Okay. Everything to the northeast of that was the original lot line for La Fuente. The strip to the southwest was the extra ground that they acquired, and you can see the extra parking spaces lined up along there. Okay. Um, the out, you can see the outline, this black outline. That's the proposed lot configuration. So that red line in between will go away. And La Fuente will own the the black outline around that property. So when the, when when this all goes in, he's going to finish that parking area there too at the same time. That I'm I'm not following you. La Fuente's parking is completed. I'm talking about that other lot for <clears throat> where the people have been parking their vehicles up there in that grass. Yes. Is that all going to be paved? That will be that is proposed to be part of the car wash site. Okay. Will not be paved as parking for La Fuente. All right. So that's okay. that's that's what I was asking. Okay. So in other words, where we were hoping La Fuente would have extra parking, it's not going to be there anymore. It's going to the car. I guess yes and no. They do have extra parking that they acquired. It's just that some vehicles like to park up in the grass. La Fuente will not get a second area for extra parking. They meet their parking requirements today. Oh, I guess if there is some overflow, yeah, if there's some overflow, maybe they need to direct customers across the street where there's some extra, there's extra parking on the uh, other side of Watson Drive. Right. Yeah, I just would not. I was. Would yeah, you? that grassy area will not be available as overflow parking for uh, left one to customers. Yeah, that was a or employees. I was yeah, it might be employees that park up there too, so they have space to save for customers. Any other questions? Be no, done. That answered my question okay. on that. Has nothing to do with the site, but right. is there no tax generated sales tax um, for the car wash? Yeah. Um, I think that question probably be more appropriate at the site plan. What we're what we're discussing now is just the replat of the lot line. Right. I'm sorry. That's okay. If there aren't any other questions, I entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept the staff recommendations. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Well, the only the only thing I want to stress was we were at one time we were looking for more parking for La Flintes. Because we were having such a problem with them parking up there in that field. When they were parking in that field, they were dragging mud and everything out on Watson Drive. And at that time, we were under the understanding there was going to be additional parking up there. Now there's not going to be. I just want to stress that to them. The, um, the, the red line there kind of shows what they started with. The and you can see where they built the additional parking. That's what was intended when we came to planning and zoning several years ago. Beyond that, they have not approached us, and um, I had not known there was any additional parking issues with them. I don't remember them adding did they add more parking when mm -hmm. we had this problem at one yeah. time? Yeah, they did. Is that on the west side? Yes. Yeah. And they took that little drive in up on the north side. And the, you could go all the way around the building. Yeah, yeah. that extra parking. Yeah, yes, yeah. I remember and that. And they added the extra parking. Yeah. But I don't remember 
it came along really, I believe it came along really fast after they opened, yeah. realized the issue. And so it wasn't a year or two that we were waiting for something to be addressed. I think it, yeah. it reared but, its head. But to Chuck's way. point, I, th I do remember discussion that was saying that, oh, well, if there went in, you know, if went in another restaurant or something that required a lot of parking, that that there might be some overflow parking into that. And because the, the proposed new thing doesn't really allow for that, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But to but to David's point, I feel like I parked in, in this lot across the street and walked across, and maybe we need to park, you know, paint a crosswalk there if there's not one. And that would take care of a lot of the issue. So... Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item on the agenda tonight um, is the Club Car Wash Site Plan Shops of Kearney. David, do you have a... Uh, staff, yeah, staff comments? Yes. Yes. Uh, at this time, I'd like to excuse myself off the okay. board because uh, of conflict. Interest. I think I'll go. I'll start out at oh maybe the uh, location map, um, and then we can change some pages as we go through the staff comments. Um, Club Car Wash, who's represented here tonight by Kurt Daniels. And I think there's maybe a person or two available on Zoom if there are some other questions. Uh, Kurt Daniels with Cochran Engineering, who's the engineering firm that prepared the plans and the submittal for the for the uh, applicants. Um, they proposed to construct a 5,671 square foot. I call it a tunnel car wash or an automatic car wash. I don't know if my terminology is correct or not, but it's not where you go in and you spray wash your car yourself. You go through the tunnel, you come out, you drive away, or you come out and you go to a, a parking space where they have some vacuum cleaners and you can clean out the interior of your car yourself. I believe they do not have uh, the detail services are provided there. I believe it's only a car wash, uh, but maybe Kirk can clarify that if we need to uh, later on. Um, the property would be adjacent to the southwest side of La Fuente Mexican Restaurant, as we noted in the uh, previous staff comments for the replat drawing. Uh, building elevations and site plan sheets were included in your packet, so you can see the layout of the property and what the uh, uh, one of the elevations of the building is to look like. Shops at Kearney, TIF agreement requires that at least 80% of the shop square footage be uh, retail stores, restaurants, hotels, pharmacies, gas stations, or other primarily sales tax generating businesses. A car wash is not a sales tax generating business. I don't know the details. I assume it has to do with being a service related business similar to you know your personal service where you get your hair cut. I don't think you pay sales tax for that. Um, because of that, we looked at, staff looked at the uses that are out there in the shops to, to gauge whether or not the, the businesses out there meet that 80% rule or not. And there's a, a table that we included in the staff report for you that explained that and shows that even with the car wash uh, opening, if it's approved, that they would meet that 80% rule. Didn't look at every single business, but we looked at the ones we knew were compliant and we at least covered that. I think we're pretty accurate right now. Um, I don't think any other businesses or sales tax generators or restaurants uh, that aren't already listed on that chart. Um, you've, you notice there's some stars there. We didn't take out the vacant spaces. There are some vacant spaces out there. Um, so they're counted in that, um, uh, they're, they're counted as if they are not a sales tax generator or if they're non-compliant. But those numbers might come out because we wouldn't necessarily count a vacant space as not being compliant. We just look at what businesses are there. Is the square footage compliant? Is the square footage non-compliant? So there's it's over 80%, a um, little bit of wiggle room, maybe a little bit higher than what we show. Uh, some other things I'd like to point out on the um, site plan. So we'll go to that. Uh, the project is considered a motor vehicle orientated business. So a, a uh, traffic study was required. They submitted a traffic study. I didn't provide that in the staff report for you because it's several pages thick, but we did provide a report of a traffic engineer who reviewed that, and uh, they looked at it for ge traffic generation, whether or not any improvements on the roadway would be required, and they looked at it for queuing 
uh, customer queuing because we know um, busy times, vehicles may stack up and follow the, the lane back and maybe impact the road. Um, in their review, they said traffic was not generated enough that would require a turn lane. And I noted in the staff report a southbound right turn lane into the site. Watson Drive already has a center turn lane, so anybody coming from the uh, from the south to the north, they can get into a lane and turn left into into the property. Um, they also said that the uh, storage lanes do look adequate for the site. Um, I guess maybe in some really busy times we might experience some backed up traffic, but from the looks of it uh, and their experience with with other sites, that they they think it looks adequate, and they've done a good job, I think, of having the entry towards the northwest side of the property to try and maximize the amount of storage that they've got. Um, cross access to the La Fuente property, if you can see on the site plan, you can see the shaded area here. Of course, we, we promote cross access between businesses so that if you're going to go to one business and then a business next door or the next one down, you don't necessarily have to go out onto Watson Drive or onto the public roads to get there. It's safer if you can maybe drive through a parking lot or, or, or park in one spot and walk from one business to the other while you're out doing your errands. Um, that stub connection for the car wash would, would be a little problematic because you may have two lanes of traffic coming into one and, and not having that stub connection from La Fuente uh, to that property made some sense. We do, however, have a stub that would continue to the south. If you, can, if you look at their entrance drive, Got a little stub that goes off to the left to the south for future connection. Um, it doesn't quite go to the property line, so staff recommends that that be extended to the property line. Um, maybe need an easement as well, potentially, at that location as well. But that's as a staff uh, recommended uh, condition of approval. Um, they will build a five-foot sidewalk along Watson Drive, and they do have a sidewalk connection up to the building, which we do require uh, to improve walkability. Now, most people probably drive their... Uh, vehicles to the site because the the goal is to wash the car, but maybe they have an employee or somebody that um, wants to walk to work, or maybe there's uh, somebody having a lunch across the street and they see their friend and they want to go visit, but they don't want to drive over there. Stormwater from the building um, and the parking lot will be directed into an underground area under the main part of the parking lot and then be directed to the north along the property line where there's existing detention basins that serve the uh, serve the development. Um, the city's sewer department will require pretreatment to remove grit uh, from, uh, from their wastewater. That'll be handled at the time of building permit. We just want to make note to, to the board that, that that's something that will be required so that the applicants know as well. Um, staff recommends approval of the club car wash site plan with the following conditions. One, submit revised drawings, including um, A, sub connection to extend to the southwest property line and B, any further revisions if necessary. Two, submit a copy of the DNR land disturbance permit if required for uh, grading of an acre or more. Three, install and maintain sediment and erosion controls throughout construction. Four, install a key box if required by the fire district, which they tend to require for, for new commercial construction. Five, submit a building permit application prior to construction. Six, submit a signed permit application prior to sign installation. And seven, develop the project in compliance with all codes, conditions, requirements, plans, and payment of fees and taxes. This application will be for the Board of Aldermen for consideration. Um, and the applicant may have some additional comments. I didn't go to the building elevations, but I'd be happy to, to share that as well. If I can maybe scroll down a couple of pages, you can see what the building looks like. It's like a brick building, a couple of uh, two tones. It looks pretty oh, new, I guess, and new and sleek. Um, with that, that's staff comments. Uh, again, Kurt Daniels is in the audience if there are any questions. And then there might be a few other on Zoom that we can, uh, after maybe Kurt has statements, if anyone else wants to speak up, then we can uh, identify you as well. Okay, Mr. Daniels, would you like to speak? Sure. Again, as David said, my name is Kirk Daniels with Cochrane Engineering, 8 East Main Street, Newstone, Missouri. Uh, I want to compliment David. We work with a lot of community development directors around the state and in multiple states. You have a superb uh, gentleman here that is very good to work with, so my compliments. 
Uh, along with me tonight on the Zoom call, I think is is Raleigh and Justin with Club Car Wars. Raleigh Barnes is the actual owner of Club Car Wars, so he's present on Zoom tonight. But David did a really good job of uh, explaining the car wash. There's not a lot of other things I can put forth on what he said. It is a tunnel car wash. The way these work, um, there's two lanes. One you can pull up and pay, which would be on the southern portion of the side or the west side of the drive up. The other one is a fast pass. You become a member. So what you do is you pull up and automatically recognize your vehicle. The arm comes up and you move forward. So David was correct. Is it a tunnel car wash? You don't get out of your car. You pull up, they'll spray off your car. Uh, then the conveyor basically takes you to the car wash. And it's elective whether you pull out and you can vacuum your, your car wash or not at that point. But other than that, like I said, David did a very good job. I think he explained everything. Uh, I think the owner's excited to be in, in Kearney. And uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Open for discussion. I have two. If you want me to go first, please. Um, first one actually is for David on your calculation of your square footage here. So by looking at what you're calling the holiday, fifty-three thousand two hundred feet. Um, obviously, that's not the footprint of that building. Right. So you're counting every floor there. Right. That's how I calculate. I believe that that I believe that's correct because uh, it's a 53,000 square foot building. There's a lot of room for. If you count, you know, if, I'm just going to point this out. If okay. you count it the way every other building is on here, with just the footprint, you may not make your square footage. Your, okay. You may not make your 80 percent. Because you'll take, that's a three-story building. I believe it's four. So we'd, four we'd cut, yeah, cut it in, cut it into four. That would make it even worse. Mm -hmm. I, I I took thirty thousand feet out. If you take thirty thousand feet out of your cumulative total, now you're down to one twenty-three, which is right where you have eighty point six. But I don't know how your law is written, so that's not for me to figure out. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing that out. Mm -hmm. but I figured it would be on square footage of the ground, but you're saying it's on square footage of the stores. Yeah, the TIF agreement says leasable square footage, and I believe that means the square footage of the ground that a sale is made or either or something like that. Either way, it brings yeah. no money into the city um, to relieve the burden of the TIF. Um, second, um, I was looking, and I can't see this on your site plan. And I know you said this connection here down at the bottom or well, immediately to the left as you come in, that's a connection to a future business. Mm -hmm. That'd be that cross across access so that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a shared driveway is another term. Well, I, it, looking at it, it looks like you, there's some kind of gravel or something drawn in there as um, I think there's a, uh, there's, that, there's, there's a pipe, I think is what it is there. Um, I can't see it with this small diagram. So yeah, do you want I me to? I can. We can zoom in on uh, Google Earth. Why don't we do that? I'm that's it. visible. Well, you're gonna have to zoom in on the flat because there's nothing there, right? I mean, is that some kind of gravel swale for taking care of the water runoff? Can I approach and show you a larger plan? There is a gravel swale for an approach, and what we would do is accommodate for that. For a temporary existing uh, area inlet. So we make sure the water flow can still get there as we connect through. Okay. Do you want me to show? Would, would you like? No, to that's fine. If that's what it's intended to be, I can. I like I said, I can. Yeah, there is. It's set all water. Uh, it's going to go to the back of the, and you can see there's two detention ponds back there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you can't make all the water run that way, um, so you're going to make what's up front run here. Temporarily, is that what you're saying? I, I, I think the way they laid out the site, the, all of the building and all of the parking lot, except, well, except maybe where the driveway comes up, but their parking lot will all collect and direct into that underground that then leads to the north. If you look on the site plan, oh, look at the I south. I mean, as well as it's graded correctly and, it, and everything goes to the back of the lot, that's fine, but 
I, it didn't look like that's what was there. It looked like that was some kind of a, a drainage. Maybe it's just temporary. That, that's actually an existing area inlet. And what we're, and David is correct, what we're doing is collecting the water. It is the existing. Site. And what's labeled on EE, which would be to the south of your building, that's an underground chamber system, and that would treat our water, so it's called a water quality system. We'd actually bring it in there. The water would uh, allow it to sediment to settle out to go into the ground, and then it meters out going to the basin. Kent, uh, I think the property to the south of the car wash site drains a little bit to the northeast to that depression area. Okay. So the car wash doesn't necessarily drain. It won't drain to that depression. The property okay. to the south drain towards the north. As long as we keep the, we can't afford any more water going into mm -hmm. that street because there's, they can't afford any more down there in the neighborhoods as it is. Mm -hmm. As you know, that's all I have. Can you pull up the site plan? I have a question. Okay. You want to share screen it? Sure. Yeah, it would be big. If I can pick the right. Here we go. It's that's the landscape page. The one. That one will work. Well, go, I guess, because of yeah, the one. So we're, just what we were talking about with the shared drive, but then there's also this weird little, like, what's that? This yeah. little guy? Yeah, what is that? That's the location of the trash enclosure. Okay. It's hard to see. There's a there's a yeah. detail right here. <coughs> mm -hmm. It fits in the corner. Yeah, I was like, what is? I mean, it's like, is there some other little drive? But yeah, that makes sense. David, does, did Mr. Peterson join the meeting? No, the, um, he did not join the meeting. Okay. I thought if there was a, a, a question about some clarification, maybe that be something that we try to acquire prior to the Board of Alderman meeting next Monday. Yeah, I just I I would feel better voting one way or the other if I if I knew that we were. Interpreting the TIF, mm -hmm. the TIF uh, rule correctly. I'd hate to pass it and then find out we've right. Is there a Robert so, David, yeah, can I, can on I comment on the TIF? So yes, yeah, sure, Robert. In, in general, the the TIFs usually go one of two ways. The city will either issue bonds up front for the costs, or the developer can elect to go pay as you go. In this instance, we did pay as you go. We uh, secured the financing, the funding for everything. So the sales tax impact really doesn't affect the city in our mind. It just, uh, it will delay repayment to us. And we've got a window of time in order to be repaid. So the only one that's really affected is, is us as the developer. And um, we're looking to get some action uh, going in this area. There's not been a lot of activity. I um, think this is a good business. Uh, great for the community. Uh, good jobs. Uh, provides a, a good service. I, it's allowed by zoning. I don't think the TIF has any language that speaks to um, why it would not be included. And we have, we have uh, contacted Gilmore Bell for a, uh, a one-page amendment that just speaks to everything and makes it absolutely clear that this is uh, an approved use and that no one has any um, heartburn or, or issues with it. Yeah, so um, if you're if you were asking for me to opine, if this is Robert Hollis, I'm a lawyer with uh, Van Matry Law Firm in Columbia, Missouri, representing um, Club car wash operating LLC. I do a lot of work. Uh, I've done all the TIF work in Columbia and represent multiple TDDs and, and CIDs. And, and I looked at the, the, the language. Um, and as far as the, the specific, and even if I didn't know anything about TIF and CIDs and TDDs, when it says leasable square footage, which it does, um, if you have a multi-story building, um, the second floor is leasable. So is the third. 
and so is the fourth and however many floors you have. So I don't think you'll have any problem to the extent that, Robert, that you're waiting on Gilmore and Bell to give you an opinion. I think that'll be really, uh, I'd be happy to give that opinion as well. I don't, I don't think that will be uh, an issue at all. And as far as, um, I, there was a question asked earlier um, and then also a comment made, a comment made that uh, it, th this development doesn't, doesn't do anything to pay towards the TIF obligations. And again, Robert, um, what he said, it's his risk and nobody else's, but um, also there are pilots, I assume, because every TIF I've seen uh, it has pilots. So that's payment in lieu of taxes, which is not sales tax. That's um, the uh, real estate tax component. And that's typically uh, substantial and the improvements to the real estate would, um, would be a, a substantial increase to this TIF being, the TIF obligations being paid uh, sooner rather than later. And then finally, there was a question asked about um, why I think that this development, um, this proposed development wouldn't generate sales taxes. And that doesn't have anything to do with TIF and doesn't have anything to do with the existence of a CID. That's just state sales tax law. And section 144 of the revised Missouri statutes defines what businesses pay sales taxes and what don't. Um, and, and this one does not. And so it's just completely irrelevant that there's a TIF or a CID because to the extent that 144 says something is uh, exempt from paying sales tax, you can't make it pay sales tax by uh, imposing a CID sales tax. And then obviously the TIF, which generates existing or which uh, captures a portion of existing sales taxes, doesn't have anything to capture uh, because there is no sales tax uh, pursuant to uh, Missouri state law. So hopefully that answers your questions. I'd be happy to try to uh, answer any others or explain something that wasn't clear. Well, I'd, I'd like to follow up with that because I'm obviously ignorant about this. Um, so there's extra sales tax being, if sales tax has, if, if I'm trying to simplify what you just said and you brought it up, I didn't, I was done with my statement, but you re-injected this. So there's extra sales tax being collected out there in that district. And I also own a property in one of these TIF districts and, and we have to collect extra sales tax. I thought it was to help pay off the bonds. Am I wrong about that? Uh, Anybody can answer that wants to. Commissioner Porter, the, there, there's no bonds being repaid in this instance. And I think to, uh, Mr. Hollis's point, uh, the type of business use doesn't require that sales tax to be collected at all. So if there was an extra 3% CID sales tax on top of nothing, then it, it's still nothing. Well, I, I understand that, Robert, but when my comment, I said it does not bring any revenue to the city and it does not help pay off anything. It does not, so you're not, it's not generating sales tax, so the city does not get any revenue out of it. You cannot refute that. Second, um, I won't bring into what, when I asked to relocate out there, what your boss said to me, but basically he told me that we couldn't generate enough sales tax to help the TIF. Now, so, I mean, you, you guys brought this out. I was done with mine, but I want, if we're going the, to talk about this now, so the, I want to know why a no sales tax, you're making it like this is no big deal. To me, I, I, as a city resident, I mean, the TIF got granted, and, and we're all paying extra sales tax to all the other businesses out there, and that's just fine. We all go out there, we buy groceries and we get gas and we get, uh, you know, we go to the Mexican restaurant and all the other restaurants out there. So that's just fine. And, and I understand that the car washes don't do sales tax. But if what you said that the, the sales tax has nothing to do with the TIF, then I completely don't understand uh, how they work, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to explain it better. Sorry about that. Um, so I shouldn't say it doesn't have anything to do with it, but it has to do, it doesn't have anything to do with determining what business 
pays a sales tax. If a business doesn't under Missouri law, so 144, overarching Missouri sales tax law, that determines what type of business pays sales taxes. Now, so you would pay a sales tax regardless, whether you're in, a, in the boundaries of a TIF or whether there's a CID. Then if there's a TIF that applies where sales tax is already being paid or would be paid under 144, then sales taxes are collected by TIF and a CID can then impose an additional sales tax, um, but only if first and foremost that 144 requires that business to pay a sales tax. So there's literally nothing you could do about it with a TIF or a CID. You can't make a business pay a sales tax when 144 doesn't permit them to. That's all I was saying. I never said that they had to. I just said, I made the comment that no sales tax is going to be generated by this property. It's not going to bring in any income to the city and it's not going to uh, offset what I understood was the debt that, that we have to pay back as citizens to the TIF. That's what we're, we can't relieve any of the debt of the TIF, but like I said, I must misunderstand and don't know anything about them. Um, all I know is that I get to collect a bunch of money to pay off one in another city and everybody else is doing it out here too. That's what I understood that the extra 1% sales tax was all about, but uh, apparently it's not. I think, I think Robert's comment from earlier was pretty important in that the sales tax that's collected, it isn't the city that's paying off the debt. It was a pay as you go. And so the developer fronted that and they have the risk. If let's say the car wash goes in and it resulted in not enough sales tax collection by the end of the TIF, yeah. then they're the ones that are out and the city's not out. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that, I can't, the other thing is at. there are property taxes collected on the, on the building. It's going to be a new building. Obviously. So in the way of a pilot, the payment in lieu of taxes, that generates quite a bit for uh, repayment towards us. And then once it, once the TIF burns off, that, that all goes to the city and the different taxing jurisdictions within. It's almost a balancing act of situating the businesses to try and pay it off a lot quicker so then the TIF can go away uh, versus, didn't. versus not. I mean, everything, I, I was done. You guys opened it back up again. And it doesn't jive with anything that I've been told about TIFs. So we'll just let it go with that. Sure. Kathy. And, and I'm not the TIF expert. That's why Robert was on here. Uh, the thing I can tell you is I go to Club Car Wash. I'm, I'm a member, of course. Uh, they do a good job. And when I do go to the Car Wash, I'm going to hit a Car Wash that has other things in the area that I can go shop at because when I get out and go, I want to I get the Car Wash and I'm going to go get McDonald's groceries or whatever. So you do have patrons coming in, they're going to get their car washed. They're going to go visit the other businesses and spend money there. It sounds like it is up to the developer's risk, uh, whether he gets paid less or not. This is a, a great business. Uh, like I said, we do them all around uh, the state. Uh, he's a, he runs a very tidy operation. He runs a clean operation. And every city we have them in, they're proud to have them there. So with that, I would just... Uh, request for your favorable recommendation of this because it is a, he runs a very good business. Uh, we are very detailed in what we have to do for our landscape, for our basins, uh, so he can make these type of businesses look good, not only today, but years down the road, so. Thank you. Do we have any more board discussion? Did you ever open it up to us? Is this a public hearing? Uh, it's not a public hearing. Public meeting, but not a public hearing. Um, if you'd like to speak, talk. Well, I, I just have a few questions. Maybe if you could take it back where it showed it there and show where the uh, like the site plan sheet. Looking yeah, down. where it showed the stub uh, from La Fuentes coming out there. Now, 
Which which way is your traffic going to flow in through there for your stack up? Uh, I'll use the hand. So you enter the site here. Can you see the hand check? Yep. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, it's big. Uh, you'll turn right, follow the outer side. Okay, that's and then, yeah, and then right here, see that little white line? That's where you pay. Right, I, okay. Yeah, I and, then you, and then you enter here, and you come out. Is that this stub way. there coming out from La Fuente is going to interfere with the stack up? No, because they're not connected. They won't be connected in this situation for that very reason is that most customers will come this way. If that stub was there, then some customers well, might come through La Fuente, and then you have a well, that's what who I'm goes first and who goes second. I thought you said earlier that they would be able to travel from one location to the other. That would be to the south. That, that stub was changed from the north side, La Fuente side, and over to the south side right here. Well, yeah, I heard you say yeah. that one, too, but I thought you said the other one. No, I'm sorry if, uh, if I and didn't I'm, say it right. I might have let them run together. Because that's what I was wondering, was it going to run into the stack? Uh, another question, where is the employee parking in this? Right there. Yep. Yeah, You're up right at, up at this end. Yep. How many uh, spaces do you have for uh, Three employees, and then there's a manager parking on one side with one ADA accessible parking lot. I don't have a pointer. I just want to throw I can just you. I yep, can just right move the there, hand yep, over it. Right there. So you're saying your full employee parking is four? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I wanted to ask. Okay, do we have any more board discussion? <clears throat> if not, I would entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve a staff recommendation. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And this will be passed on to the board of aldermen meeting um, next Monday, mm -hmm. same time, seventeenth. Okay. There being no business this evening, um, we have some enclosures and any discussion, any board discussion. No board discussion. I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.